What is going on, Laker fans? Appreciate you guys tuning in on this Friday night. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Lakers, Warriors, Crypto.com Arena. Uh, Lakers end up losing the game 129 to 125. Uh, break it all down. Kind of go through the box score. Go through the uh, BS uh, overturning the call on Jalen Hood and Shafino. Um, by the way, what the hell was that? The hell was that? It was a foul. Why are we overturning that call in a preseason game? Anyways, uh, spent some time on that. Starters looked really good. Is that the five? Is that the starting five? Got a ridiculous stat here. Lakers, 53% from three in the preseason. The starters are shooting 53% from three in the preseason. Um, uh, starters played well tonight. Is that the five? Is Torian Prince going to be in the starting lineup? He's certainly making a case. He started the last three games. We'll talk about some of the, the rest of the guys on this Lakers roster outside of the, the starters, Christian Wood, uh, Colin Castleton, uh, Jalen hood Shafino, some of these other guys that got some minutes toward the end. So we'll spend some time on that. And then um, Lakers Warriors, part of that GM poll, they have something in common. I'll take some questions and some comments. I think I mentioned in the last show, that I'm always going to read off questions and comments that you guys put in the comment section. I got some from the last game that also pertain. I'm very particular of what I think is a topic that will pertain to what we're doing here. So I'll spend some time on that as well. And, uh, and we'll take it from there. So I appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Okay. First thing I want to do, by the way, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Um, continue. I'm over 23,000 people subscribed on the channel. That's awesome. I appreciate it. I think there's so much room for growth. So if you're on here and you're on this channel a lot and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Um, okay, first thing I want to do is I do want to break down just a, a little bit of the box score. I'm actually going to do this because I, I think walking through it together is uh, kind of a fun way of doing it. So um, box score right now, if you just kind of look at it, there's some things that I specifically want to highlight. Um, okay, so offense not a problem either for either team lakers uh 50 from the field and the warriors 51 percent. how about this from three-point shooting lakers 16 of 36 from three while the golden state warriors 17 of 41 so both teams shooting the heck out of the ball from the three-point line 16 to 36 44 percent uh nobody's going to be complaining about the lakers three-point shooting nobody's really going to be complaining about the Lakers offense and there's nothing really to complain about, but I'll, I'll give you a couple things to complain about. Um, for those who have been Laker fans for a long time, is it just me or does it seem like we're always bad from the free throw line? Never consistent with the free throw line. It's a preseason game. You got some guys that, you know, eventually came in uh, into the game and we're getting some playing time that aren't necessarily going to get a lot of PT. But even Braun was three for six from the three from the free throw line. Jackson Hayes, I guess, no surprise there, one for four. Jalen Hood, Shafino, one for four from the free throw line. He hasn't really uh, made too much of a case here for himself. He hasn't looked all that good. But I hated the free throws. Just seeing that, I think that happens all the time. Nobody's too crazy about that. Uh, both teams dishing the ball, thirty six assists for the Golden State Warriors. That's good basketball when you could dish the ball that many times and guys are connecting 30 assists for the Lakers. I'll take 30 any day of the week. That's a lot of assists as well. This is a problem um, for both teams, 22 turnovers, 18 turnovers for the Lakers, but that's the number that killed the Lakers. 33 points off of turnovers for the uh, Golden State Warriors. So something to keep in mind there, 33 to 17 in that department. Lakers 20 to seven in fast break points. So they make up some ground there. And uh, Lakers had a lead uh, up at 13 by one point. The Warriors had a lead of seven at one point. So from a box score perspective, that is what the box score looked like. Uh, Warriors over the Lakers, 129 to 125 that I mentioned. Um, for me, the things that, uh, uh, like I mentioned, that that are, are most important from the box score perspective, shooting the three-point the three point ball, very impressive by the Lakers. Give them all the credit in the world of that. But you got to hit your free throws. That's an area that the Lakers certainly struggled. And I mentioned the turnovers and points off turnovers. Lakers got to do a better job from that department. Um, but by the way, also too many fouls, or actually that was them. They had the 27 fouls. But for both teams, just uh, sloppy. But I guess that comes with preseason play. 
Um, okay. Can I just talk about this real quick? Just because um, it's uh, it's it's here at the moment. It's pre sins. It, it's not a big deal. Winning and losing is not the end of the world. But I genuinely do not understand that play call or the reverse call. Um, Jalen Hood Shafino looked like he got fouled. Who was that? Kaminga, maybe. I'm not sure who it was. I can't think off the top of my I don't think actually it was Kaminga. Um, is another player from the uh, Golden State Warriors. Um, but just watching the play and then getting a chance to see the replay, looked like he connected with him, the head, the body, something along those lines. That usually is not a play that gets overturned. If it's iffy, if it's just iffy enough where you're, you know, you're telling yourself, okay, you know what? Um, there's enough contact there. Let's not, let's not, even if it's a review, let's not take it back. And it was kind of funny. The Warriors all doing this whole thing because they wanted to see the review. Laker players saying that's a foul, 100%. That's a foul. Anyways, it's it's a lot of the stars that are just uh, having a good time, kind of uh, having fun with the result of the game. But ultimately, it cost the Lakers a chance to you know get another W in preseason. I was listening to Lakers head coach Darvin Ham. You could tell, yeah, they know it's preseason, but they 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 want to still win and create a winning culture. And they want some of these other players who might not be getting playing time to get the feeling of getting a win. So the Lakers obviously weren't able to do it. Kind of interesting from the Warrior perspective. Uh, Gary Payton the second was in at the end. Um, Moody was in at the end. Kaminga was in at the end. So they started a, a few players that you know are going to get some good playing time that were in there um, towards the end of the game. Okay. Starters for the Lakers. I want to go through what the starters did uh, tonight for the Lakers, and uh, I'll highlight just the starters for now, um, and then we'll get into some of the other players that were a part of the mix here. But starter looks, starters look good. They really did. Um, I think there's two topics here. One topic is continuing to complement. When the Lakers five play together, which we obviously have not got – too much of an opportunity to see. Um, that's a pretty lethal five. And then there's other moments of the game where it, it's lethal because they got so much length and they got so much size. Let me give you guys an example. So I'm watching the game. I'm there at Crypto. I'm watching the game. And um, it was in the first quarter. And the Lakers had their starters doing whatever they were doing. I think in... Um, in the first quarter, I think the Lakers put up 37 points in the first quarter, gave up 32, but they put up they put up 37 points. But there's just so many weapons that the Lakers have. And then the Lakers go to some substitutions. And I'm looking at when the substitutions come in, and it was like Rui, Christian Wood. Uh, I think it was this. I'm trying to think of the five that was in there, but it was like Rui, Christian Wood. Max Christie, Anthony Davis, and D'Angelo Russell was something like that. They're big. The team is big. It might have been Torian Prince and, and maybe not Christian Wood, something along those lines. But you could just see the length and the size. And then there was a moment where Braun is in, Anthony Davis is not, and the five that they have out together, it's like, wow, they're always going to have that advantage with other teams. The length, the size – the talent, the ability to go small, the ability to go big, the ability to hit your open shots, the ability to hit threes. That's impressive. That's impressive. Now, um, yes, just preseason, but that's all we can kind of gauge it off of. But I think every Laker fan out there knows what I'm talking about. It's a good squad. It's a good team. Okay, let me get into the starters sp uh, specifically here real quick. So um, let's throw that up there, see some of the starters here. Um, okay. So here, here are basically your starters for the game. It's AD, it's Torian Prince, it's LeBron, and it's D'Lo. I'm not I'm gonna not gonna bother trying to highlight this. Okay. So it's AD, it's Torian Prince, LeBron, D'Lo, and uh and Austin Reeves. Okay. We know Braun only played the first half. Um, some of these other guys, you know, obviously got longer run. Let's just go down the list, all right? Anthony Davis gave you 13, 6, and 4 in 22 minutes, okay? Got to the free throw line, too, which I like to see. Um, Torian Prince. Torian Prince gave you 17 points and another two steals. He had two steals in the last game in 20 minutes of play, and look how efficient. Five of six from the field, 
four or five from the three point line, got to the free throw line a couple times. Braun in 18 minutes, 12 points, five assists. Um, I already mentioned his free throw, struggle from the free throw line. D'Lo again, uh, 12 points on eight shots, by the way, uh, six assists and four rebounds. Kind of filled up that box score is what you like to see. And then Austin Reeves, 16 points, three rebounds, three assists, two steals, six of nine from the field in 24 minutes. Um, we know how dangerous Austin Reeves is. Look at that balance. Look at that balance. That's just a, a, a team that you can tell guys that complement each other, very unselfish players in the process. I mean, the assists I love the most. Look at this. Anthony Davis with four, LeBron with five, D'Lo with six, and then Austin Reeves with three. Ball's moving. Um, the ball doesn't have to stick, that there's multiple threats when they're out there. It's an interesting starting lineup. You know, I, I didn't think – I've said this a couple times that I, I thought Torian Prince was a very underrating signing for the Lakers, underrated signing for the Lakers, and that I wouldn't mind him in the starting lineup. However – I didn't think he was going to end up in the starting lineup. And maybe that just has to do with Jared Vanderbilt is, you know, nursing an injury like he is right now. And maybe it is going to be Jared Vanderbilt. Rui, I, I still for, feel very firm. I'd like to see him come off the bench. But the balance that you can get from this starting lineup and the ability then to say, cool, when we go to the bench, we're going to go to Rui. We're going to go to Christian Wood. By the way, another double digits for him, 13 points. He's kind of a walking bucket when he wants to be. Um, that you still have all these other weapons that you can bring in off the bench. You don't lose your size. You don't lose your skill set. Gabe Vincent didn't play today. Uh, that's impressive. So whether that's going to be the five or not, I'm not sure of yet. But if it is the five, I'm not going to be one that's complaining. I'm definitely not going to be one that's complaining. I have no reason to complain, no need to complain. Uh, I'm a fan of, of Torian Prince, and I'm a fan of the opportunities that he's got so far that I, I feel like he's he's really, really um, making the best of it. Okay. Is that going to be the starting five? Is that what you guys want to see for the starting five? I just actually heard somebody ask uh, Darvin Ham who's going to be the starting five, and, and he – you know, just basically said next question. So they're, they either don't know already or they just don't want to tell anybody for whatever reason it is. And, and they don't have to. That's okay. Not that big of a deal. Um, you know, we're going to find out in a couple games anyways. There's only two more preseason games left. So it's not like uh, the world is going to end either way. Um, but as of right now, um, you know, when I look at that box score and I, I look at the Lakers and I look at that five, I don't mind that five at all. If you told me tomorrow that's the starting five for the Lakers, um, I am not one that's going to uh, sit here and complain about it. I think Torian Prince is uh, is a good enough player to make a case to be in that starting five, but let's see what Darvin Ham decides to do. But that balance of 13, 17, 12, 12, and 16, and the most amount of minutes anybody played in your starting lineup was 26 minutes, That's a that's a great sign. And then, like I said, the assist tells me that the ball is moving and none of these guys are selfish. They're not going to be selfish. That's just not in any of these guys' DNA. So uh, that's something to keep in mind right there. And, and we'll see if Torian Prince, three starts in a row, if he becomes the guy eventually, or if this is just he's holding the spot for Jared Vanderbilt for now. Okay. Uh, by the way, any thoughts or comments on any of this stuff, some of the topics that I'm hitting, hitting on, feel free to put it in the, uh, in the comments below. Um, all right. Stop sharing that screen right there, and I'm going to keep going. Okay, a couple other guys that I want to get into. I want to get into a few of the the, the, the rest of the guys here on the roster. Um, Christian Wood, I was just mentioning. You know, I liked about Wood, and, I, and I'll probably always point this out. Anytime I do a postgame show, you guys got to know something about me. Um, I love the game of basketball. Love it. Played it my whole life. Uh, watch it, obviously, religiously. The business that I'm in is associated to it. Um, I don't look at just how many points did this guy score. I look. I have a curiosity. Are they doing other things? A lot of, um, you know, I, I, a lot of times we could get caught up in what somebody does on offense, but you also got to look at what else are they doing because you need multiple guys doing multiple things to win games and go make a championship run. Christian Wood, 5 of 8 tonight. Love the 7 rebounds. 
and he's a big dude. I mean, the guy, he's got the size and he, he's got the ability. And uh, I'm sure that's going to be something that's emphasized. I think he was averaging six, seven, eight rebounds a game anyways in Dallas, Houston, those last couple of places that he was at. But he had 13 points. Can I talk about somebody else that I know I, I understand he's not going to go out there and get a ton of PT, uh, but it makes me think of him in summer league. Lakers were trying to win the game at the end. And um, Colin Castleton is just a – I enjoy watching him play basketball. All right? I'm not telling you that he's going to get that many opportunities or any opportunities for all I know this year. But eight points and seven rebounds for him, a couple block shots, um, a nice force around the basket, plays the pick and roll well, hits the glass when he needs to, and Colin Kasson will do it. Was doing that in the summer league as well. So, uh, shout out to him. Whatever opportunity he ends up getting, I just like his demeanor, his style. Um, I like there was a, a a foul call that he huddled the team together. Uh, small things like I, I I noticed small things like that. I'm sure you guys do as well. And uh, certainly enjoyed him tonight, getting that eight and seven and trying to help the Lakers win. Um, he was the good news of some of the other players. The bad news. I think this one's obvious. Damn, Jalen Hood, Shafino, relax on on how many shots you're taking. Relax on having to. I feel like he's forcing up shots. I feel like he's shooting anytime he touches the ball. Um, you know, uh, I, I I love the five assists. I mean, he set up Castleton with a beautiful play towards the end of the game. I think the Lakers took a one point lead. Um, but find your shot. Find the shot that you feel like that's part of my game. Find the shot that you look at and say, this was in the flow of the offense. Um, if it's not there, that's okay. Make that extra pass. Try to set somebody else up. The five assists, love it. The one of seven, if you go look at how this guy's been shooting, listening to uh, Stu Lance on the call while I was watching the game on Spectrum, and Stu just kept saying, the guy just needs something to drop to make him feel better. And I think even the free throw line, he was just one of four. So not a good start for uh, for Jalen hood Shafino to start the uh, the year off, but uh, uh, that's okay. World's not going to end. It was just, you know, something that I was pointing out. Um, for me, I, I look at Jalen hood Shafino, and I'm looking forward to his development. But right now you could tell he's not comfortable, forcing a lot of shots, and has not looked good so far in preseason. There's, there's nothing really to sugarcoat there. He hasn't looked good. Okay, so that's pretty much the roster that I want to talk about from the Laker perspective. I want to spend um, a couple minutes on something here real quick. So the NBA GM survey that came out, um, both the Lakers and the War Warriors were, neither were selected to win an NBA championship. So of all the GMs out there, Nobody picked the Lakers. Nobody picked the Warriors, which is kind of interesting, right? A LeBron team, a Warriors team that I'm sure it's been a while that no GMs, when they do this survey over X amount of years, probably 10 years plus, that nobody picked a team that LeBron was on and nobody picked a team that Steph was on. But nobody did. It was uh, Boston, Milwaukee had some picks. Of course, Denver did. And I think Clippers had a pick as well. I think Phoenix did as well. Maybe Phoenix was the other team. Clippers had one pick. So neither the Lakers and the Warriors were picked to uh, to win an NBA championship. That's fine. It's it's all good. It doesn't really matter. I think once you play the game, that's all that matters. But I was watching the Golden State Warriors, and I don't know what you guys think so far, the Warriors. We've seen them twice. Um, you know, watching the watching the experiment of Chris Paul, I think will be uh interesting. Um, you know, it's such a team that is already small. They, you know, I, Clay is so unpredictable. Times Clay will shoot 10 of 14 from the field or he'll shoot three of 10 like he did tonight. I kind of, I'm not sure what you're going to get from him. Wiggins a little bit up and down. I think that the biggest question for the Golden State Warriors, we've seen the Warriors twice in preseason. Jonathan Kaminga had 24 points in one of the games and he had 26 points tonight and very efficient. He was nine of 12 tonight. And I think was very efficient in the other game that he played uh, against the Lakers. They've only played two preseason games. Um, so with that in mind, I think for them, 
their success is going to come down to is how good Jonathan Kaminga is this year, how good Jonathan Kaminga is this year, and probably how good Jonathan Kaminga is this year. I think he's going to be that important. How good Moody is, how good Gary Payton the second is, because I, I I don't know. It's hard for me to see how they're going to be really, really competitive because of how small that they are. I know they got Dario Saric, but that guy never seems to be healthy. I know Draymond Green will eventually come back, but when I think of the true, true contenders in the West, it's tough for me to pick against them as in not have them in the conversation because they are the Warriors, but it's tough for me to figure out how they're going to be in the mix. So that's my thought there on the uh, on the Golden State Warriors. Okay, um, two more things that I want to do here. By the way, uh, I have to do it, and it is my job to do it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed. Would greatly appreciate that. Um, I mentioned this last time, that question and comments that I'll use for the next show. So I got a couple comments here that was, I think, really interesting that I want to get into, and this is going to tie into something around D'Angelo Russell, okay? Let me actually do this. Let's make this easy here. Uh, I'm going to share the screen on this one so you guys can see uh, some of the comments here. So here's a comment here that I want to read, all right? Um, so this is coming from James Allen Jr. Says, uh, and and these are this topic is going to be relevant for a couple of reasons. Uh, D'Lo is great when it doesn't matter much. We talked about D'Lo in the last one, so I'll spend some time on this. But sucks when it's most important. The thing is that gets you to the playoffs. What you do with it then is your business. Lakers have powerful playoff players like Prince and Vincent to cover for D'Lo when it counts. That puts the Lakers over the edge and allows their superstars to win. Um, okay. So I got a thought on this. Um, I asked uh, Darvin Ham in the pregame show today, asked him, what's the perfect night for D'Angelo Russell? What are you hoping to see? What's a night that you walk away and you say, okay, that was a good night for D'Lo. And he said he wants him to be himself. He wants him to you know, be aggressive when he needs to be. He wants him to facilitate. He wants him to play defense. That to him is a perfect night. Put the stats away. That's a that's a perfect night for him. Then I'm doing the pregame show with Michael Thompson. I said, Michael, I asked Darvin Ham that question. What to you is a perfect night? And he said, D'Angelo Russell just needs to make sure that he's not a liability on offense, or I'm sorry, on defense. That for him, a perfect night for D'Lo is he's going to get his points. He's going to facilitate. But ultimately, at the end of the day, are you helping the team? Or do we have to take you out because you're such a liability on the defensive side? So I thought that was an interesting answer. Um, I think D'Lo is in a really, really good spot with the Lakers in that they don't have to depend on, on D'Angelo Russell every single night to say, D'Lo, lead us on offense. D'Lo, lead us in facilitating. D'Lo, lead us here, lead us there. That does not need to be D'Lo at all. I mean, I just read off what the starters did. I'll go back to it real quick. The Lakers starters tonight, AD had 13, 6, and 4 in 22 minutes. Torian Prince chipped in with 17. LeBron had 12 and 5. Austin Reeves gave you 16, 3, and 3 with a couple of steals. By the way, D'Lo had a couple of steals. Torian Prince had a couple of steals. It's not like Christian Wood gave you 13. It's not like the Lakers need D'Lo to lead the Los Angeles Lakers. But I thought those answers were interesting, that really everything, what it's leading back to is – Hit your jumpers and and make sure, make sure that uh, – I didn't have this big enough, did I? Um, hit your jumpers and then make sure that when it comes down to defense, you're actually uh, somebody that's not hurting the team. Nobody's saying he's going to go be the glove Gary Payton. Nobody's saying he's going to go be Met Meta World Peace, but you can't hurt the team because of your defense. So I thought that was an interesting one. And I appreciate uh, James Allen Jr. for putting that in. Okay, I got another one that I wanted down here. Find this one real quick. This one's a good one. I'm afraid you might get injured during your jab warm-ups. Um, Pale Fox, you're not that wrong. Uh, okay. The other one I had. 
These are kind of funny. And poof, just like that, Sliwa changes his tune on D'Lo. Okay. <laughs> Guys, we haven't even played a, a regular season game yet. It's not changing your tune. I want D'Lo to play well because if D'Lo plays well, then the Lakers play well. I was very critical of D'Lo in the playoffs for a reason. I did not think he performed. I, 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 I don't even have to tell you how he performed specifically against Denver, and I didn't think he was all that consistent against Memphis and, and uh, Golden State. He had moments, but I don't think you were depending on him. Um, the Denver series, I don't need to tell you anything. The Lakers didn't even put him in the lineup in most of those games because they couldn't because he wasn't helping the team. So it's not changing your tune. It's hoping that D'Angelo Russell changes his game to accommodate what the Lakers need. And that's just going to be part of it, right? Like we can't just sit here and um, and pretend that that doesn't exist. It's not I like the guy or don't like the guy. And and I'll, I'll, I'll admit this one. And I think I've mentioned before when the Lakers traded for him, his first stint with the Lakers, I was not a fan of. I thought he was incredibly cocky. And I thought, he had a lot to learn. Let's put it that way. Hopefully, as you can do, it's his ninth year in the league. So if there's ever a time, there's no more real excuses for D'Angelo Russell. It's his ninth year. So now it's time for him to kind of show what he's all about. And he's only on a two-year deal with the Lakers, and only one of those years are guaranteed. He has the option to leave if he wants to after this year. Um, I love these. Now it appears that you're changing your tune. Okay. All right. Okay, I had one more here. Um, that I wanted to read here real quick. D'Lo says, oh, so for preseason, all right, is what it is. D'Angelo Russell, by the way, I will say this, he is just a kind of a, a, a polarizing player where everybody seems to be talking about him, and that's okay. Uh, that, that comes with the territory. When you're on the Los Angeles Lakers and you have a team that's uh, got the you know potential to win an NBA championship, that's all right. Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, D'Lo has been unbelievable in preseason, but I think that gives you some expectations of what a guy like Darvin Ham and a guy like Michael Thompson, who played in the league and has been associated with the NBA for so long, their perspective on what they think the Lakers need from D'Angelo Russell. Okay. I know one other thing that I want to do here. And by the way, I encourage you guys questions, comments. Um, this is going to be in every show type of segment where I take some questions or comments that I like, I highlight them, and we go from there. The guy saying that I was going to get injured by jabbing, you're about 80% right on there. Um, okay, so one thing, um, the top 10 came out for ESPN. I don't know if you guys finally eventually saw it, but the top 10 ranking did come out. And... Uh, this was an interesting one only because you did not know where they were going to eventually put LeBron James and Anthony Davis. We we both knew or we all knew that they were going to be top 10. And it turns out that uh, the way the rankings went as far as um, number 10 and number nine, uh, number 10 is Anthony Davis. Let me get that bad boy up here. Um Number 10 is Anthony Davis. And uh, by the way, for those who don't know, last year AD was ranked number 20. So the NBA has him as the 10th best player in the league. Number nine, still ahead of LeBron James, is or still ahead of Anthony Davis is LeBron. So top 10 rankings, it's uh, it's AD at number 10, Braun at number nine. Look at this, dirty. They got Shea Gilgis there at number eight. That dude is a baller. I... I, I Young team in a small market. I know a lot. Of, not a lot of people are watching him, but that dude is the real deal. Kevin Durant at seven, Tatum at six, Steph I think they put at five, Luca they put at four, uh, Embiid, uh, Nikola Jokic, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. I would flip that. I think Jokic is the best player in the world. I put him at number one. That's my personal opinion right there. Um, Okay, I just wanted to share that because I know that ranking was coming out and we hadn't seen where LeBron and uh, AD are. AD number 10, LeBron sits at number 9. Last thing I got, Laker fans, is next game for the Lake Show. It's coming up on uh, Sunday. Hey, got to be honest. I'm excited about this game. We get to see a little bit of 
Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard from Crypto.com Arena get to see the Bucks and the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't know if Bron's going to play now, and he's only playing in half the game, so he's already played in uh, – obviously has already played in uh, two of the preseason games, so he's only going to play in one of the next two. But Giannis, Dame, Crypto on Sunday. Looking forward to it. It's an early game. I'm going to do my pregame show on radio at 2.30. And then I'll come on here after the game and uh, do a little post game action. So I uh, hope you guys can join there on Sunday. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday night, a fantastic Saturday. Go enjoy that college football tomorrow. And then we'll get back with Lakers basketball on Sunday. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys back this upcoming Sunday after the Lakers take on the Bucks. Thank you, Lake fans. Appreciate it. Have a good uh, start of your weekend.